In the heart of ancient Rome, where emperors were revered as gods, reigned a man whose thirst for power knew no bounds. Commodus a name that echoes in history not for wisdom or bravery, but for vanity and extravagance. Ascending the throne in AD 180 as co-emperor with his father, the philosopher King Marcus Aurelius, Commodus' reign marked a significant departure from the stoic and cautious governance of his predecessors. Imagine a ruler so consumed by his ego that he declared himself the reincarnation of Hercules, turning the Colosseum into his personal stage to display his divine strength. A leader who, instead of leading Rome to prosperity, drowned in the depths of self-indulgence and extravagance. But who was this man who sat on one of the most powerful thrones in history? Was he just a wayward youth corrupted by absolute power, or a tyrant whose actions heralded the downfall of a great empire? This is not just a tale of power and decadence. It is a reflection of the eternal struggle between virtue and vice, humility and arrogance. Let's find out the truth behind the man who became a legend for all the wrong reasons. Born on the 31st of August, 161 AD, into the lap of imperial luxury, Lucius Aurelius Commodus was the son of Marcus Aurelius, one of Rome's most respected emperors, and Faustina the Younger, a woman of noble lineage. Raised in the opulence of the Roman elite, Commodus' early life was a far cry from the hardships faced by the common Roman citizen. Educated by the finest tutors in literature, philosophy, and warfare, Commodus was groomed from a young age for the role of an emperor. However, unlike his father, whose reign was marked by wisdom and a dedication to Stoic philosophy, Commodus showed early signs of a different disposition, one inclined more towards luxury and entertainment than the rigors of statecraft. Marcus Aurelius, a philosopher king, who ruled with a focus on wisdom and virtue, saw in his son a potential co-emperor who could continue his legacy. In a move that surprised many, Aurelius named Commodus as co-emperor in 177 AD, at the young age of 15. This decision marked the beginning of a new era in Roman history. The ascension of Commodus was a stark contrast to his father's stoic and philosophical approach. Where Marcus Aurelius saw rulership as a duty to the people, Commodus viewed it as a means to personal glory. As he grew in power, so did his ego and his taste for extravagance. The Rome that witnessed the rise of Commodus was about to experience a seismic shift in leadership style. Gone were the days of the philosopher king, and in came an era where the whims of the emperor dictated the course of the empire. It was a transition that would not only shape Commodus' reign, but also leave an indelible mark on the history of Rome. As Commodus took the reins of power, the Roman Empire witnessed a dramatic transformation in its leadership style. Gone was the stoic and forced approach of Marcus Aurelius, and in its place appeared the extravagant and ego-driven rule of Commodus. Commodus' style of government was characterized by his lavish lifestyle and a penchant for self-indulgence. He spent extravagantly on games and pageants, using the coffers of the empire to finance his rich desires. His reign was marked not by the welfare of his subjects, but by the glorification of his personality. This shift in priorities led to growing discontent between the people and the Senate. The once stable and prosperous empire under Marcus Aurelius began to falter under the weight of Commodus extravagance and neglect. The contrast between father and son could not be starker. Where Marcus Aurelius had devoted his life to the principles of Stoicism, valuing self-control and duty above all else, Commodus reveled in the unchecked exercise of power and pleasure. His rule was a far cry from the philosophical and prudent government of his father. Commodus' egocentric behavior knew no bounds. He imagined himself as the reincarnation of Hercules even going so far as to personally participate in gladiator fights and act considered beneath the dignity of an emperor. His obsession with his divinity led him to rename Rome and its institutions after him, an act that epitomized his self-aggrandizement. The impact of Commodus' rule was profound. 
His disregard for traditional Roman values and his focus on personal glory set the empire on a path of turmoil and instability. But what led to the downfall of such a powerful figure? How did the reign of Commodus, once a prince poised for greatness, turn into a chapter of shame in the annals of Roman history? As Commodus firmly established his reign, the Roman Empire witnessed a series of acts and decisions that were as controversial as they were extravagant. One of the most famous was his obsession with gladiatorial combat, an arena where he believed his divine status could be displayed. Commodus has not only loved himself as a spectator of these brutal games, he took an active part, fancying himself a reincarnation of Hercules. He entered the arena, sword in hand, facing opponents who were often inadequately armed to ensure his victory. This spectacle was not just for fun, it was a demonstration of his power and God's status in his eyes. For the Roman populace and the Senate, these acts were not only unbecoming of an empire, they were sacrilege. The Colosseum, a symbol of Roman power and dignity, had become a personal stage for Commodus' vanity. This behavior widened the gap between the emperor and his people, eroding the respect and dignity of the imperial office. Politically, Commodus' reign was marked by a series of important decisions that had lasting impacts. He managed to alienate the Senate, often ignoring their advice and choosing the advice of those who flattered his ego. He was known for his arbitrary and capricious actions, executing senators and other high-ranking officials on suspicion of conspiracy or disloyalty. The impact of these decisions was profound. Commodus' disregard for traditional Roman values and governance eroded the stability and effectiveness of his administration. The empire, once powerful and expanding under his predecessors, began to show signs of strain and corruption. His reign was becoming synonymous with the decline of Roman imperial prestige. Commodus' actions, far from glorifying the empire, cast a shadow over Rome's golden age. His reign, filled with controversial decisions, was a turning point in the history of the Roman Empire, marking the beginning of its final decline. But how did it all end? Commodus' rule would not last. The seeds of discontent sown throughout his reign eventually led to his downfall. As the gulf between the emperor and his people widened, conspiracies began to form within his palace walls. The end came swiftly for Commodus. On the last night of 192 AD, his trusted advisors, including the prefect of the Praetorian Guard, orchestrated his assassination. In a twist of fate, the man who saw himself as a god was killed in an ordinary way like any mortal. His death marked the end of the Antonine dynasty and plunged Rome into a year of civil war. The aftermath of Commodus' assassination was chaotic. Rome, now leaderless, faced instability and power struggles, leading to a period known as the Year of the Five Emperors. It was a time that tested the endurance and structure of the Roman Empire. History remembers Commodus not as a wise or just ruler, but as a symbol of the fall of Rome. His reign is often cited as the beginning of the end of the great Roman Empire. The once powerful and disciplined empire under his predecessors remained, in Commodus's wake, fragile and vulnerable. The story of Commodus is a powerful reminder of how excesses of ego and power can lead to the downfall of even the most powerful.